Last week, we kicked off this video series by talking about some killer commands that make editing files in Sublime Text quicker and easier. And certainly, there's a lot more of that to talk about in upcoming videos in the series. However, today we're going to talk about something a little bit different because there's something else about Sublime Text that can affect your speed in editing files, and that is the user interface itself. Now, as we can see around me, the user interface of Sublime Text is fairly minimal, and that's by design to provide more room for you to see and work with the text that you're actually trying to edit. And that means that there's a lot of cool features about Sublime Text UI, some that are easy to discover and some perhaps not so much. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odanator here. Welcome to this week's video on the Sublime Text user interface, finding your way around, knowing a little bit more about this thing we call Sublime Text. Now the interface of Sublime Text is, as I said in the introduction, a little bit minimal. And that's by design. John Skinner, the author of Sublime Text, did that on purpose because he thought that a text editor should be showing you the text that you're editing, which makes a lot of sense. That's why there's not graphical toolbars along the top of the window and why most of the user interface is as small and inobtrusive as possible. There are panels that pop up instead of dialog boxes that float and everything hides itself away when it's not needed to give you text editing room. What that does mean is that finding your way around the Sublime interface, if you're a new user to it, can perhaps be a little bit daunting. And even if you're a seasoned user of Sublime Text, it's possible that there's some aspects of the user interface that have been there for a while that do things perhaps you don't even know that they're doing. So you want to watch this to the end and see if there's any tips and tricks in here that can make your life more sublime. Now, this video is going to be a rapid fire video. We want to provide more of an overview of the user interface as a whole. There are some concepts in here that have been discussed in previous videos. And for those, there are links down in the description below. For anything else, if there's anything that you would like to see fleshed out in more detail, there's a couple ways to do that. You could drop down into the comment section and leave a comment there, or in the description of the video, there's a link to the Discord that we set up a couple of weeks ago. You could ask questions in there as well. In either one of those cases, while you're going down there, you might want to use those buttons to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so that when the video is created, you will be among the first to know about it. And uh, before we get into this, we also want to point out that this is going to show some sneak peeks into things that are available in Sublime Text 4 that aren't available in Sublime Text 3. So those will be marked on the screen as such as so that you will know that that's something that is Sublime Text 4 or higher. Uh, this might be the impetus you need if you're not already using it to use Sublime Text. There's a link about that down in the video description as well. Like a lot of software, Sublime Text uses tabs to represent the files that you currently have open or the files that you've created that you haven't quite saved yet. There could be a large number of these things open, and in that case, you might have a hard time seeing all of them at once. But these little arrows to the left of the tab bar, those will allow you to scroll the tabs around to find the one that you like. If you don't have enough tabs to overflow the tab bar, then these buttons won't do anything. Clicking on this downward facing arrow on the right hand side of the tab bar will open a pop up menu that gives you a list of all of the files that are open in that tab bar, allowing you to easily find the file that you want if you have a lot of tabs open. Tabs spring into existence when you load files, which are a variety of ways to do, and you can also create new tabs as well for files that you would like to create. There's a couple of easy shortcuts for that. One would be to double click in any empty part of the tab bar to cause a new tab to spring into existence. And if you're using Sublime Text 4, there's a dedicated plus button here that will also do the same thing for situations where you have so many tabs that there isn't an open space. You can turn this button off if you like. Sublime Text 4 has the ability to give you a more distraction-free environment while you're working with tabs by allowing you to automatically hide the tab bar while you're editing text and then bringing it back later when you need it. Sublime allows you to open not only files but also folders as well so that you can edit projects as a whole and easily see the structure and hierarchy of files. There's also a lot of features in Sublime Text related to knowing about information about the files that you're actually editing. This list of files is stored in the sidebar which appears on the left hand side of the window while it's available and otherwise it will hide itself away. Due to the way that Sublime wants to keep a minimal user interface, the sidebar will not display itself if it doesn't have anything to display. You can easily toggle it open and close and use it to navigate around inside of your files. This is an example of something that we've covered in a previous video. See the description for more information. While the sidebar is open, you can adjust how much size it takes up in the window by using the mouse to hover over the split and then click and drag to make it wider or smaller. Pro tip, if you double click this split with the mouse, the sidebar will size itself to exactly the width it needs to be for the longest thing that's currently visible inside of it. 
If we shift our focus down to the bottom part of the window, we're going to see what we refer to as the status bar, which gives us status about Sublime Text and other editing operations that we're taking on. The thing to focus on first is this button all the way to the left of the status bar, which is the panel chooser icon. Now, if you're a Sublime Text 3 user, Clicking this will open a menu that shows you the list of all of the panels that are currently docked at the bottom of the window. This is all of the find panels that are in Sublime Text by default and plugin panels will also appear here as well. So if you use something like LSP or a code linter that displays statistics at the bottom of the window or if you're using Terminus to execute builds or just regular build systems, you can easily find those panels by looking inside of this menu. It's automatically updated. If you're in Sublime Text 4, this button is a little bit hands. You'll notice that the button actually looks a little bit different and that's because left clicking it here opens and closes the sidebar for you. And if you'd like to actually get that pop up menu that Sublime Text 3 users see, you right click on it instead, which is a more traditional way to get a context menu. Also, as a Sublime Text 4 user, you can hide this if you're not interested in seeing it. The purpose of the status bar is to give you status information on the files that you're editing, and it changes depending on which file currently has the focus. There's a lot of information that will appear here as well, such as the current uh, cursor location in a line and column uh, form, how many characters you have selected, how many selections you have if you have more than one, how many find results there are, what snippet fields you're in if you're expanding a snippet, and much more. Those are just things that Sublime displays by itself if you happen to be using packages that uh, take particular operations, they might display status information there as well, including temporary informational messages. Here's something that's new that was added in Sublime Text 4. If you were to select multiple numbers inside of the content of a file, the status bar will add them all up and tell you what they sum to, which can be handy in a variety of situations. If you happen to be working with a file that is stored in Git, then you'll see a button similar to this one in the status bar, which allows you to see a little bit of uh, overview of the status of the repository that you're working inside of, and clicking it will open Sublime Merge for this particular repository. You can also turn this button off if you don't want to see it. Sublime tells you information about the indentation settings that are currently in effect, what tab sizes are, and whether you're using spaces or physical tabs. You can click on this to open a menu that allows you to quickly and easily set these settings for the file that you're currently editing, including commands for quickly and easily changing the indentation styles as well, converting spaces to tabs, and vice versa. At the far right of the status bar is text that tells you what type of file you're currently editing. And the type of file controls things like the syntax highlighting that you see, build systems that are available, snippets that are available, and some package functionality that's only available in certain types of files as well. This is an informational message. You can also click on it to open a menu that shows you the list of all of the file types Sublime currently knows about, and choosing one of these will get it to infer that this current file is of that particular type. You can also use the menu items in here to change the default mapping for extensions as well, so that one type of file will always open as another. Different operating systems have different conventions for what characters are used to terminate lines inside of text files. And if you happen to be working with files that span multiple operating systems like Windows and Linux, it can be handy to know what sort of line endings are in use at any given time. And Sublime can actually show you this information in the status bar. Although it's not turned on by default, you have to turn it on inside of the settings. But if you do turn it on, you'll see the type of line endings that are in the file that you're currently editing. And you can also click on it to get a menu that allows you to easily change the line endings as well. Similar to different line endings, it can also be handy to know which of the many system encodings for text is being used for the file that you currently have open. And Sublime can display this information in the status bar as well, although again, like line endings, it's not turned on by default. However, if you were to turn it on, you can not only see the encoding, much like line endings, you can click on it and change the encoding as well. In Sublime Text 3, the status bar information on the line endings and the encoding is turned off by default, but can be turned on if you'd like to see it. The same is true for Sublime Text 4, but Sublime Text 4 also has options that allow you to turn off the already visible items for the indentation and the file type if you would like to not see those. In addition, much like you can auto hide the tab bar while you're typing to minimize screen space and clutter, you can also have the status bar auto hide while you're typing as well. The bulk of the area in the window is the file editing area, which contains the content for the files that you're currently working on. Now, this particular area defaults to displaying the content of one file at a time, but using menu options or the associated key bindings for those menu options, you can divide the layout up in a variety of different ways. Columns, rows, columns and rows, and anything in between. You can also use the very awesome origami package to manipulate the layout in even more sophisticated ways, save them, 
and restore them again later. That is a topic we've covered in a previous video though. Frequently we're going to have more than one file open at any given time and we need to be able to navigate between them while we work. The most obvious way to do that being using the mouse, but we can do it faster using the keyboard and there's a lot of key bindings built in to speed this operation up. If you've availed yourself of the ability to split the window into panes and groups of files, then there are key bindings available that allow you to very easily swap the focus between any open groups. So you can have two files open and easily switch between them. You can also use key bindings from the origami package if you use it to move around as well, including moving files between groups groups, which can be a handy feature all on its own. For just a single group of files, there's also a variety of operations. You can address specific tabs directly by their number for the first nine tabs in a group to jump directly to them. Super pro tip, there's also a key binding that lets you give the focus to the sidebar if you'd like to manipulate that with the keyboard. Apart from that, you can navigate backwards and forwards through tabs in a linear fashion and use a very powerful, most recently used function to do this as well, which may be a term that you're not familiar with, but you are familiar with how it works because it's exactly how Windows and other operating systems allow you to swatch between applications. And it works a little bit something like this. You hold down Control and or Shift, depending on which direction you want to go. While you hold those down, tap the Tab button. Every time you do that, you move forward or backwards through the tabs in the group. When you get to the tab that you're interested in working with next, let go of the Control button and the focus will stay right where you are. Now that you've done this, a simple control tab will switch you back and forth between this tab and the one that was most recently focused, allowing you to very easily switch between two things. And the history of tabs that you visit is stored as well. Very handy way to get around. There's a lot more to talk about when it comes to workflows in Sublime Text. For example, in Sublime Text 4, it's possible to select multiple tabs at the same time, which makes the content of all of them visible at the same time in a temporary split in the window. It's handy for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is being able to jump to the definition or reference to any symbols in your code and see it side by side, and then quickly close that and get on with what you were doing without disrupting the layout of your window, which is a very powerful feature indeed, and something we're going to talk about in an upcoming video on the channel. Channel. So you're going to want to use those buttons down below my head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so when that becomes available, you'll know about it. If you have any questions about what we did in here in this video, you can leave those down in the comment section below or in the description. There's a link to my Discord. You can ask questions there as well. You can, of course, also ask questions in the live streams they do here on YouTube and on Twitch if you'd like to get a live interactive response. Whether I see you in one of those places or the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.